Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first episode of Faith Children at Home. Guys, I am so excited to start off this new series. Um, as you can see, I made that intro. Very excited about that. I sent it to a lot of my friends. I said, guys, look what I made for these awesome children. It's you guys. <laughs> But it's so good to see you guys back over here again with some great new content for you guys. We're going to be learning a lot about God. We're going to be reading a lot of the Bible. Um, and it's going to look really similar to the Rewind sessions, but they're going to be a little different. Some of the challenges are going to be pretty different um, just in the way that they're done. And then we're going to take a little different spin on some things. So that way, even if you guys do come to in-person stuff, at church, you can still watch these and get some new material and learn something new. That way, people at home and people that are comfortable coming in person are able to get a little bit of both. And so, I'm really, really excited, guys, um, to get this to get this going. Um, with that, today we're going to be looking into Second Corinthians chapter five, verse sixteen. So, if you guys want to open up your Bibles to that, um, this week's challenge. So, what we're I'm going to change up the challenges just a little bit. So last time they were like, you guys could go do these things. You guys could like some of the challenges where you could go build something, send me a video of your favorite snack. They were kind of like informational videos, kind of would send you guys on little scavenger hunts around your house and whatnot. We're going to change them up. These are called challenges after all. So I'm going to challenge you guys with a different task every week. And I want you guys to send me a video of you finishing or trying to accomplish that task and the person who can do the task or complete the challenge and send me a video of it will get featured on our YouTube channel. So for example, I will demonstrate this week's challenge. So this week's challenge is to take, you can choose between a quarter or a die, like one of these, like a six-sided, six-sided die. You can take one of these die, put it on your elbow, and then you have to catch it in your hand. So now just wait. You might say, no, that's way too easy. I am a very talented, skilled, athletic person, and you just want me to catch one die on my hand. Asher's looking at me right now. He's saying, Noah, I am the most gifted athlete in the entire universe. I can catch 12 die, all stacked on one elbow in one go. And I encourage you to give that a shot. Um, you guys can, if the more quarters you stack, or if you guys can stack maybe two die on top of each other and bounce it off and catch it, you guys will be more more of a chance to get entered into the prize. And so I challenge you this week to go out and catch as many die or quarters as you can by bouncing them off your elbow. And then send them to me. My email will be in the description. I'm really excited to see you guys pull that off. So yeah, guys, let's jump right in. Oh, I gotta shut this. Let's jump right in to 2 Corinthians. Um, I'm really excited today. Open up to 2 Corinthians chapter five. Um, verses 16. All right. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness, righteousness of God. So that was a really beautiful verse that we just read. And so what does it mean? What do we want to talk about from that verse? Well, let's pull out one big sentence in this verse or the series of verses that we want to focus in on. And so let's say verse 19. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. So he uses the word reconciliation in that verse twice. Well, reconciling and reconciliation. So we'll say that that was used twice in one line or in one verse. And so what does it mean? Think really quick. Pause the video 
and think if you guys can define what reconciliation is or what role that has in our lives. Did you think of it? What did you think? I, so when I hear the term reconciliation, I think of forgiveness. I think of if I had something going on with my sibling or if I was, if I did something wrong or someone hurt me, I need to reconcile with that person, right? I have to go to them and reconciling is kind of like you forgiving someone or you're reconciling is you can make, you can make new again, or you can make good by talking to someone or just fixing something that was broken in the past. So for example, my sister and I did not get along very well when we were younger, um, almost all the way through high school. But then I went away to college. I came back and my sister and I, her name is Tessa, had some really great conversations and we ended up growing really close. And our relationship was reconciled because what was once broken was now made whole again. I keep doing this. I like how it feels. <laughs> was once, was because the, re the, because the relationship was reconciled and it was made whole again. And this verse here, as we, if we read it again, now knowing that reconciliation can mean along the lines of forgiveness, to make whole again, to, to make good in a way. Now that we know what that means, let's read verse 19 one more time. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself. I lost my place. Not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting us the message of reconciliation. So this is saying that Jesus came to the world with this message of reconciliation. God sent Jesus to us to be reconciled to God, to be made good with God. We've talked about probably almost every single week in Sunday school and in these videos and the rewind videos and now in the faith at home videos, we have been talking about this idea of sin takes us away from God. The sin of Adam and Eve in the garden took us away from God. It put this divide. It made this broken relationship between a lot, almost all things or all things. And Jesus came to reconcile that. He came to make that relationship good and whole again. And so through Jesus and his death on the cross and his sacrifice for us, we can be made whole again with God. And it just takes us to believe and dedicate our lives to Jesus to know that and to believe that and to take part in that new reconciliation that we have. And then at the end of the verse, it says that we are now trusted to preach this message of reconciliation. To say that to the rest of the world, we have the privilege of going out and sharing what we believe in Jesus and what we believe in God to the rest of the world to say, you are forgiven. You have been reconciled because Jesus came and saved us. Jesus came and died on the cross for our sins, for the things that we have done wrong. And we have hope in Jesus. And it's this really, really beautiful idea. And I encourage you guys to think about that for yourself, to take a moment and think about what Jesus means to you. Because I can tell you guys so many things um, through this video or in Sunday school. I can tell you that sin takes us away from God. Or I can tell you that we need to be reconciled. We need to forgive. But it's hard if we haven't experienced those things for ourselves. It's really hard. And so I encourage you guys to think about that. What does forgiveness mean to you? What does Jesus dying on the cross mean to you? And is reconciliation something in your heart that you, you feel or want to, you feel or know fully? And I think it's a really beautiful thing. And it's not something you need to figure out right now, right now. It's something that you can think on and, and ponder. You know, we all do. We all have these hard questions, especially this past Sunday at Sunday school. We had a lot of hard questions talking about the future. We talked about COVID. Those are a lot of hard things. And a lot of questions are hard, um, especially this idea of reconciliation. Because forgiving people is hard. You know, if my sister and I had to have a hard conversation. And Jesus dying on the cross is the hardest thing that he could have possibly done. There is nothing larger that could have happened um, to save us. And so it's this really beautiful idea of really processing this and really experiencing it because then we get to go share it with the world. And so, and you guys are all really smart and really capable and full of love. And just whenever I see you guys, I love talking to you guys. You guys have such great ideas. And you guys really know the scriptures really well. And so I encourage you to think about this more yourself as well. And I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say um, when I see you guys later this week. And so with that, guys, the overall thing I want me to ta us to take away from this is that Jesus came to earth to reconcile us, to make good with us. 
and that be, through his death on the cross, because sin took us away from God. And now we have the privilege of preaching and sharing that message to the rest of the world, to all the people that might not have heard it, to might not get to come to Sunday school, or might not get to go to church as an adult. And so I'm really excited to see where this goes. And thank you guys for joining me on the first episode of Faith Children at Home. I'm excited to see those challenges. Be sure to stack as many quarters as you can on your elbow. I'm not very good at it, so I'm excited to see what you guys... I know Asher's extremely skilled at every sport, so I'm very excited to see um, that participation. <laughs> I love you guys. You guys are amazing. I look forward to seeing you this week at Sunday School if you come. And remember... On February 13th at 3 o'clock, we're having the Take Heart Valentine celebration. We're going to be talking about the courage to love, what it means to love someone the way that Jesus loves someone. And we're going to be talking about courage and bravery amidst, or like in that idea as well. So be sure to sign up for that. If you're interested, I'll be there. Darren will be there. We'll have plenty of candy. There's going to be an obstacle course even. And there's going to be a whole bunch of fun games as well. So bye, guys. Have a great rest of your day.